Here's an interview from one of our past shows on Rock and Metal Revival. If you're interested in hearing full shows, go to our Facebook page and check out our list of affiliates for times and places where you can hear Rock and Metal Revival. There's Fight the Good Fight from Triumph on Rock and Metal Revival. And Jerry, I, I can I go back to 1982, the World Series of Rock County Stadium. Oh, yeah? First time I wow. seen Triumph, and I was a fan from that moment on. I think I saw him on the Allied Forces tour, yeah. and yeah, just three people being able to make that much sound, sound. Yeah. yeah, and so many unique sounds. It was just baffling. I know yeah. there's another trio from Canada, Canada that, that does about, that, yeah. but th- these were always my favorite right <laughs> exactly. here. Exactly, and we want to welcome Mike Levine back to Rock and Metal Revival. Welcome to the show, Mike. Hey, nice to be here, and thanks for having me. Mike, uh, like I said, that day in uh, 1982 playing at County Stadium, you guys just tore it up, and uh, Jerry and I, like we said, have been fans since uh, that Allied Forces tour that we saw, and uh, I want to say, first off, congratulations on uh, being inducted into the Canadian Walk of Fame. Oh, that's cool. Thank you very much. It was, uh, it's quite an honor up here, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's a unique situation. You know, they induct people from all of various walks of life you know it's not just like the hollywood one where it's all entertainment mm-hmm. we have entertainment and uh, i don't know if you guys ever heard of an architect named frank gary mm. he's, uh, huh. he's like huge he's done everything all over the world i didn't even know he was canadian <laughs> oh okay cool <laughs> but but he was a fellow inductee mark messier the hockey player was inducted this year you know so it was, it was really kind of cool will arnett the, the comic tv star oh yeah yeah, nice, so it, nice. was, uh, it, it was quite the extravaganza. Well, you know, uh, being fans for a long time, it's very exciting uh, to see that the uh, Triumph Classics is being re-released uh, on double vinyl. Yes. What, what prompted you guys to reissue that? I mean, because I've had that CD for years, and I've, I think I've worn out a couple copies. <laughs> um, you know, it never got issued properly in the first place. It was what was called the Contractual Commitment Album. Uh, uh, when you leave a label, uh, they usually, back then, they got the right to do a greatest hits, which, mm. of course, they they do as cheaply, as inexpensively to make the most money mm. that they possibly can off it. So that's what they did. And uh, uh, as a result, it never really, it was always something that bugged us, that it, that it never really got packaged properly. So, I don't know, not that long ago, it was only maybe three, three or four months ago, somebody said, you know, it's the 30th anniversary of that record. You guys should do something with it. Uh-huh. Well, well, that's a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> away we went, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, we just barely made it before Christmas, but it, it, it uh, got done, and it sounds great, it looks great, I'm really happy with it. So where can I get a copy? Because I'm a big vinyl fan, and finding Triumph albums is very hard around here. Yeah, it's, it's, hard, it's hard everywhere. There's not just enough stores anywhere anymore. Yeah. You know, they're very li- limited in their supply. Yeah. Uh, there, there's an online uh, uh, place called Pop Market. Okay. Uh, but that is really good. They're really a great online source for vinyl and everything else for that matter. Oh. But, uh, you know, for sure they have it. I know that for a fact. And uh, pretty much every other piece of Triumph product. <coughs> Excuse me. I think Am- Amazon has it if you can find it. That's the whole page is all screwed up mm-hmm. as, uh, or so I'm told. So I just go to Pop Market and say, okay, that's the place. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. n- another thing I'm really excited about, uh, Mike, is when I saw that uh, Banger Films was doing the documentary uh, Triumph, Lay It on the Line. Yes. Uh, and I know that's coming out in 2020. How did that all come about and in, in, in you guys getting involved with that? Well, you know, there's we got approached about, um, uh, about doing a documentary by a gentleman named Don Allen who directed uh, a lot of our videos, uh, you know, once upon a time. And uh, so we got in, uh, involved with Don, and, you know, we scripted it out, and he put a couple of people on it just to test the waters and see which directions we could go in. And it just bogged down in, in bogged down in this, you know, everything. The, the film business is the slowest business in the world. <laughs> so uh, Banger then came to us and said, hey, we want to do a doc. We, we heard you were working to try to do something with Don, but we'd like to take the project over so, uh, you know, Don and us got together and said, sure, why not? I mean, 
Banger's an incredible oh, company. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're the, the gold standard in rock, rock uh, felt. Yeah. So uh, we were really pleased that they wanted to get involved, and uh, uh, we've been working on it now. I guess we're into a year and a half, probably, oh, okay. of shooting. You know, so, um, you know, and uh, again, bangers, uh, they still got stuff they want to shoot, you know. So we'll we'll see whether we make that, that uh, we're looking at probably September release on it. But, um, okay. I, you know, who, who knows for sure. So um, the other day, well, actually today I was watching on, uh, I taped uh, the U.S. Us Festival in uh, Festival. the Metal Day at Us Festival. And it had, had like three or four songs by Triumph on it. I remember seeing that back in the day live on uh, MTV. Now you uh-huh. guys, you guys got fl- had to fly in into that gig, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Now, we were in. We played the day before in, in Orlando at the Orange Bowl with ZZ Top. Wow! <laughs> and then Sorry, had, no, the ta- Tangerine Bowl, Tangerine Bowl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you had to go all the way across the country. Across the country. <laughs> wow. And, uh, you know, we got a, a half decent night's sleep and then played the next day. Wow. Now, when you saw all those people from the helicopter, did you see where where they parked? Because there, there must have been a zillion cars somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't, rec- I don't recall seeing the, the parking lot. I recall seeing the fences being broken down oh, and yeah. people rushing in while wow. we were flying over. But yes. it was already looked like a, a major city from up in the air. Oh, you know, yeah. it's just like... Yeah, massive amounts of people. So what was it like playing? It's because you were in the daytime, you could see the mountain, the sea of people. That must have been yeah. kind of intimidating. <laughs> I don't know. Well, what? actually, it's probably the first time in, in, that I really felt uncomfortable on stage. Really? Yeah, because yeah, there was just so many people. You, fig- you, you didn't know if you were communicating with them at all. You know, you weren't close to them. Ah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, you got the initial roar that sometimes it took like two seconds to get to the stage from that far back. Oh, yeah. Uh, but then we realized, and I realized specifically, that, uh, you know, there's 30 odd cameras all around us, and it's like a TV show, yeah. basically. And you have to play to the cameras instead of play to the crowd. So, because there's, you know, there's big screens everywhere all over the, all over the venue. Mm hmm. Yeah, nice. Well, I got a question. You know, the other day I saw that you and uh, Rick and Gil got back together and played a couple of songs for your mega fans. Oh, yeah. Which I was, like, really envious of. How did it feel to be back up on stage with those two guys again? <laughs> oh, it was great. You know, we had uh, uh, we had a great time. It's uh, uh, We weren't going to do it. This was for part of the film company put that together, that whole extravaganza, you know, which was out at... Uh, at the Metalworks Studios complex and uh, in the mm. warehousing, and they put together quite the uh, uh, the showpiece for the fans that got to come. Nice. And uh, you know, we were not planning to play. The whole thing was, uh, you know, you could, fans can come, they can hang out. They set up like a museum, almost of memorabilia, and uh, we we're going to do a Q and a, a Q and A, and that was and take pictures with everybody, and then that was our involvement, so to speak. But, uh, you know, we were sitting around talking for a couple of months before the event and said, you know, maybe we should play. Nice. <laughs> wow. And so we, you know, got together to rehearse and then decided, oh, maybe we shouldn't play. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. I can't that. believe that no. either. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> and and then, then we said, well, let's give it a couple of more shots before we make a decision. And. And we found the groove, you know, it took us, a, you know, two or three rehearsals to, to, to really get into it and feel like, okay, we can do this. Right. So, um, you know, we worked our asses off, and it was a complete surprise for the fans. They had okay. no idea we'd play, and uh, the crew guys that were working on the, on the whole project, they set up a beautiful stage, they set up, a, you know, an incredible lighting system. I mean, it was like a stadium system almost, in a wow. warehouse. Nice. Yeah, so it was really cool. Lots of pyro, and uh, uh, you know, we played three songs, and uh, it was um, it was uh, it was an, an experience because of the, because of the fans, they they went absolutely out of their skins. Yeah. It was like we just went, holy shit, we're, you know, we're in trouble here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to be a selfish fan right now, and I'm going to ask: Is there any chance of the three of you getting together, and maybe doing one big show in Canada? Because I would get my passport and come right away. 
<laughs> uh, here's, here's the issue with that. You know, the, after playing three songs, um, we were, all three of us were exhausted in a total of, <laughs> we all ached all over. <laughs> uh, I hear that. <laughs> you know, it was not like the old days. So, um, and the other part of it is, if you're going to do one big show, it takes as long to prepare for that as it does to prepare for a tour. Yeah. Yeah. So what right? about, it's, what about like What a, about that? You, you might ask. Yeah. 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 <laughs> What well, I'd, I'd, I'd say you never know, but I think the, the physical limitations that we all have as, mm-hmm. as we're getting older would preclude anything major, you know. Uh, it's not that we, we don't talk about it. We talk about it and go, uh, no, I don't think we can do it, you know, is the end result. What about but you, know, you, like, you never know what will happen as, yeah. as time goes on. You know, we're talking about maybe going back in the studio and doing a couple of tracks. If somebody has a great song, you know, that we can record. So that's um, it's part and parcel of the whole thing. I mean, we've been busier now than we've been in years, so it's everybody's getting the buzz going again. <laughs> nice. What about like a Vegas reg- re- residency where you don't have to go anywhere? Well, that's a possibility. But everybody you comes play to for, you. Everybody you still comes play to you. For, yeah. That's still got to play for an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That can be hard, I know. But, you know, yeah. Mike, it's got to be a good feeling after uh, all these years of trying to been around that people still want yeah. Triumph. You know, I mean, yeah. that's got to make you feel pretty good. Oh, it sure does. You know, we all feel like, we're, like we feel really honored that that we were able to create something that is enduring and also that, that af- affected the fans, you know, affected people, affected their lives in, in, in sometimes hugely major ways. You know, so it's... Um, it's something you don't dismiss. You know, when I get asked for an autograph, I, I always sign it. You know, it's like, oh, don't bother me or anything. Because like, uh-huh. without the fans, you know, we never would have gone anywhere. That's nah. the bottom line. Well, has there been any thoughts or discussions about reissuing the Triumph catalog with possibly some bonus cuts of some live stuff that hasn't been released for, you know, the diehards? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we we look at all the all the different possibilities, and I think that the you know timing is everything. So you got to you got to space stuff out uh, as best you can, and uh, you know we do have some live stuff that's never seen the light of day, and there's oh, there's a reason for that because it, some of it wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> But but that doesn't really matter anymore. Like the whole landscape of music has changed, you know. And really, to give the the whole like like you guys said, you know, for the fans that would really want that, good, bad, mm-hmm. or indifferent, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah. You know? So we're we're looking at all the possibilities as the next couple of years go by. Cool, cool. Now, uh, being a musician myself, I really love like the intro to Magic Power. You know, you got. Uh, Rick playing that nice little melody and you playing the nice little melody on the keyboard you think Gil could have been back there maybe giving it some cowbell <laughs> would have made it even <laughs> would have made it even a bigger hit I don't know cowbells were always uh, very difficult to record <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that seems to be, you gotta find the right space <laughs> the best cowbell ever recorded was in Mississippi Queen my mouth. <laughs> yep. exactly yeah, that's that that is the best cowbell. Period. Yeah, we've talked to him. Yeah, <laughs> he's a cool, Corky's a cool guy. Oh, he's a, he's a laugh a minute. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, oh, he's a Canadian too, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they actually Mountain did. I don't know how many. I think, I think they did it about forty dates with us. Thirty oh, dates. Outstanding. Cool. Uh, yeah, and so we got you know with the <laughs> we got to know Leslie and Corky really well. I mean, that's just their great guys. We just yeah. Don't, they're a panic to be with. Well, well, Mike, we want uh, all the Triumph fans to go out. I know I am going to head out I'm and getting gonna... that uh, double <laughs> that double LP because uh, as being a longtime <laughs> Triumph fan, I, that's got to be in my collection. And it's got we're... a couple bonus tracks, but, right? Yeah, a couple bonus tracks on it, yeah. too, right? Yeah, there's a track from the, uh, the Never Surrender from the Us Festival. Oh, cool. And um, uh, the Blinding Light show from when we played in Sweden in Ooh. 2008. Definitely, nice. Definitely so, uh, Triumph fans, get out and pick that up. Uh, it is always an honor to have you on the show, Mike. We do appreciate it. And here, we've got pretty much everything you guys have recorded. Why don't you pick your favorite song to go out of this interview with from oh, Triumph? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. You put 
put me on the spot. Favorite song. Um, well, you guys just played Fight the Good Fight, right? Yes, sir. 